place a little bit of numbing in our two entry point, points before we do some numbing underneath the skin. So we're using just our typical 1% ly lidocaine with epi. And just pre-numbing these areas a little bit here. And then move this one a little bit further back here. Okay, good. Now you can stop that. Okay, you can you can keep going. So I'm just going to use some um, ultrasound gel here just to keep the hair matted down, and then we're going to spray uh, the face with another cleanser, the hypochlorous acid, and that's just an extra sterilizer. Then we're going to number up and I'm going to use a, this is a 25 gauge um, spinal needle and it's good because we can reach all the areas with one poke essentially or one poke from each uh, from each uh, entry point. So here we go. It's a little bit steamy here for a second but we'll get it in there quick. We don't need a lot. We can typically get away with five cc's per side or something like that. So we're just putting a little bit in with each track here. You can see I'm going to be crossing over. And then the third one is going to go down here. will cross over the ones that are going across. Good. The only one I'm going to numb up without this needle is the temple because there's too many vessels. So we're going to switch to a 22 cannula and we'll just do a little bit in the temporal area. This is a nice anchoring point here. So we're going to come back up in this direction and we'll put our 22 in and we'll just put a little bit this and yeah and that was about five cc's okay for the whole thing so now that we got that done I like to use a one millimeter punch for our entry points as opposed to a needle it just makes a nice round opening and those heal up just fine so I'm using a split sponge here to keep the hair out of our way and we're going to use a fine, it's a preloaded cannula and so we're going to, we're really going to skip over this dot and we're going to go here and here and we're going to put one here and one here and so we want to stay in the subcutaneous plane and then create a V shape here. There's the second one and feel where it is and then we're going to tie this these two together and that gives us a nice pull as they anchor to each other we'll cut those and then we'll bury the knot by pushing down on it and so again our second set is going to be it's going to skip the two that we just did and we're going to go to this point here, right there, and then the one below that is at the marionette area. Staying subcutaneous and not catching any skin there. And then, again, we can tie these two. down we'll pop the knot under the skin and then we'll go back to this original point and we'll do our third set which is really more of a vertical lift here so we will cross over all these and we'll place it in 
once again right there, and then straight down to the jowl. Then we'll do another tie. Okay. And the last set will go vertically into the, these are the petites, the little smaller. They will go up into the temporal area and create a nice anchor that will pull up vertically. So this is a reverse back up into the temple. And again, we'll take our two, and you can see how that nicely pulls everything up. And I'll do a single tie here. And then we will bury the petites up here. And then we'll push down to pop that in. And make sure that our holes aren't being tethered or tugged at. If they are, you can undermine around the hole. Yeah, good. So then we'll just cover these guys. And we'll do the other side. And on the other side, we'll use our gel to keep the hair out of the way. We've done our spray. And then we're going to uh, numb up these areas. Again, we're going to numb up in a V fashion like this, using our spinal, guiding it under the skin with just a little bit of body cream in each track, maybe a half a cc. So we'll switch to cannula. You could do everything with the cannula. I just find it doesn't reach quite far enough, so I end up using the needle. But we see very little bruising even with the needle. So again, we're just going to put a little bit in here. And that's all the numbing that we need. Once again, I'll use a split sponge to protect the hair. And we'll go ahead and we'll start at the top here and go towards the nasolabial fold. And we'll move. We'll skip one dot. We'll go down to the approximately the commissure. And then we'll pull those two together. see that kind of rippling that means we've pulled it tightly and then we'll pop the knee pop the uh, knot in help anything that's stuck here by pushing the opposite direction and then we'll go to the second entry point here using our biopsy punch over the other ones. Okay. And then our third, we go back up to the top and do our vertical factor. And then the last two dots. so that we 
you see some buckling there. Okay. And you can push down, and make sure everything looks smooth. And then finally, we'll do our two petites up into the temple. V-shape up this way. It's good because usually my left side's more sensitive. So. Okay. okay. Okay, so we've just done the mint procedure. It's taken maybe 15 minutes to do it. And uh, you can see because we injected the fluid in the face, it's going to look full, but you can also notice there's a nice lift here all along the jawline, the nasolabial area. So once the swelling goes down, it's going to look fantastic. And uh, usually we see very little bruising, but the patient can ice if, if they want. Um, we try to tell the patients to take it easy. Don't do a lot of facial movement, a lot of exercise in the first week because we don't want the threads to slip out of place. Um, we check to see if there's any dimpling or puckering and we can usually just press that out if we see it and we don't see it right now. Um, and so, um, you know, there's a few days of swelling and patients are patients will do fine and we can get up to a year of benefit. So that's the mint thread lifting procedure. Thanks a lot.